congenital sucrase isomaltase deficiency, or CSID. It's a rare congenital disorder of the small intestine and its inability to absorb sucrose, you know, a common form of sugar. We've all heard of folks who are lactose intolerant. Well, CSID is somewhat similar and can be very, very difficult to diagnose. So here to explain more, as part of our special series, Behind the Mystery, Rare and Genetic Diseases, is Dr. William Treem, a pediatric gastroenterologist. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. So let's talk about CSID. How does it manifest and does it only affect children? No, it doesn't only affect children. Uh, classically, it does manifest very early in life during infancy with severe diarrhea, bloating, gas, abdominal pain, uh, and poor growth, uh, malnutrition even. Uh, but it can manifest itself in a less uh, dramatic way mm -hmm. uh, and could affect uh, toddlers or even older children with what has been called irritable bowel syndrome, mm -hmm. but, is RBS. but is actually CSID, or even adolescents or adults who've carried a diagnosis of diarrhea predominant irritable bowel syndrome maybe all their life when in fact they may have had this underlying genetic enzyme deficiency. Which leads me to parents who maybe don't know, and we know it's a genetic disease, it's passed on, and I can only imagine it could be an emotional roller coaster for parents who are unaware and their children maybe have the symptoms, they can't really control them. Tough, right? Very tough, very tough. And I think the key here is to recognize and be persistent about your child's symptoms, to go to your doctors and make them aware that there is a problem and that perhaps the uh, remedies that have been suggested are not really doing the trick. But I think that's the key. I think uh, the, the, the symptoms are very common. Diarrhea, pain, mm -hmm. irritability, uh, but the disease is very rare. Correct. And therefore many physicians are not very familiar with it. And I think it takes the parents to be their child's advocate to really push for the right diagnosis. And that's why we're talking about it today on the Balancing Act. And we actually have two families with us. We spoke with the Harris family earlier today about their journey and their toddler with CSID. Let's listen to their story. Well, Hudson was about four months old when I switched him over to formula from nursing. And within a week, he started having um, huge episodes of explosive diarrhea um, 10 to 15 times a day. We took him to his pediatricians. They ruled out uh, parasites, a virus. They thought he had a milk protein allergy. So then they referred us to several GI specialists that all thought the same thing. So we switched his uh, formula probably nine times. And instead of the symptoms getting better, they continued to get worse. Finally, we took him to the ER and they said he wasn't leaving the ER. They did some tests and said he's going to stay and have upper and lower scopes done. And just thankfully, the right doctors decided to do the scopes on him really soon and early on and that's what got us the diagnosis. Well, because this is a genetic disease and both Ted and I do not display any symptoms whatsoever, we're looking into genetic testing for Hudson, but also my mom and her twin sister both have IBS, so I'm assuming that it could possibly be coming from that side of the family. For us, it took nearly five months to get a diagnosis, but once the diagnosis was given to us and we got him on the medicine, things changed overnight for us and everything has gotten a lot better since then. Now, Dr. The Harris family, very lucky to diagnose this early. Very lucky uh, because the average time between the onset of symptoms in this rare disease and actual diagnosis of the disease is over two years. Oh, so, wow. so obviously this family saw the right people, persisted. Uh, I know they went through several different diagnoses, but they got to the right diagnosis and hence Hudson is doing extremely well. Well, stay right there, doctor, because I want to talk more about it. And up next, we're going to talk about treatment, finding support, and how one mom's unwavering intuition and determination finally brought about a diagnosis in her daughter. They're going to join us in the studio in just a bit. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me now is Brandy Rabin and her nine-year-old daughter, Addison, who suffers from CSID. And of course, Dr. Treem. Mom, 
Let me start with you. Um, I know she was diagnosed around two. Tell me how you found out. Addison started having um, symptoms around the age of 10 months. Um, she'd been perfectly a normal infant childhood um, up until um, 10 months when I started weaning her from breast milk. Mm -hmm. And then from 10 months to 20 months, she had diarrhea all day, every day. Wow. 10, 15, 20, up to 30 diapers a day. Not and normal. Not normal at all. And so started seeing um, doctors, were sent to specialists pretty quickly. Um, but unfortunately, went through several doctors and, and nobody just could, could believe that really she had that much diarrhea. Um, and thought maybe we were exaggerating a bit. And so we, we tried different things, got several misdiagnoses. And finally, about 20 months old, she was properly diagnosed um, through a small bowel biopsy and um, we received the diagnosis of CSID. And from that point on, we, um, she takes medication every day. She's on a special diet. Um, but otherwise, we, we've done really well. Addison's thriving, um, is very um, involved in activities, and we have the opportunity to help other families um, who uh, are just getting started on the CSID road. And my background is as a medical social worker, so I have the opportunity to use my medical uh, social work skills in addition to real world experience in helping other patients and families who are also dealing with CSID. And thank goodness you it on early because like the doctor now we're talking there are so many people that can wait years and years and they don't Absolutely. even know Addison let me bring you in you're just you're so darling you're so beautiful and I'm glad you're doing great uh, you, you've obviously had to modify your life tell me if there's a special diet the medications but obviously that's not stopped you um, well I take CK with every meal and I and I'm on a special diet um, but I enjoy uh, riding my bike and going to school and um, doing Girl Scouts and dance. So mom, she actually just does what every normal child does as long as she takes her medication. Absolutely, her life is not limited by her disorder. And that's awesome. Doctor, you know, it's, it's interesting because she mentioned Sucrade and it, it really sounds like an easy fix as soon as the diagnosis is there. Yes, this is an enzyme replacement therapy. So it replaces the enzyme that's missing in Addison's small intestine. And it's an enzyme that comes from baker's yeast. Uh, and uh, as long as you take it with every meal, uh, really you can uh, almost uh, completely normalize your diet. There have to be some restrictions, but I think uh, it can make children like Addison feel normal. They go to school, they participate, they're not afraid mm -hmm. of what's going to happen to them. And uh, I think that's been a tremendous advance for us. And that's the key. I mean, and the doctor and I were talking about it a few minutes ago and what you're doing, just creating that awareness, right, Mom? Yes, absolutely. We know that there are uh, probably underdiagnosed um, families out there, and so we just want to build awareness about CSID. And so if a, a patient has ongoing symptoms, they can see their physician. I'm going to end with you because you're just absolutely beautiful and I love you. If someone out there maybe today or tomorrow is finding out that they have CSID, what would you tell that child? Um, well, you do have to take medicine every day, but really you can act normal like any other normal kid. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. God bless you. Mom, thank, thank you, you so much. Doctor, thank you for the information. And if you'd like additional information, head to CSIDcares.org. CSID patients and caregivers can learn more about support, treatment, education, and much more. Also, QOL Medical has initiated a research study for children who have been diagnosed with IBS, recurrent diarrhea, or IBS, recurrent abdominal pain, to determine whether any of this may actually have CSID. So that website, check it out, CSIDGPS.com. That's CSIDGPS.com.